Hello, thanks for tuning in. It's Leela from Miss Leela Pink Journey sharing with you a quick video on how I use the Mighty Hoop system to hoop a shirt and stitch out my logo. My first step is to grab a sheet of cutaway no show mesh stabilizer. I'm going to plop it right down into the hooping station here. Lock those down. I'm using the five by five hoop and I am going to place my shirt up here and I'm going to line it up. According to the Hoop Master logo placement guide, since my shirt is a large, I'm going to, for large or extra large, you would use a C15 setup. So my collar needs to come up to the C placement and where the circles at the bottom I already have it on the 15 lineup. At this point, I'm checking to make sure I have my shirt laying correctly on the Hoop Master system. I want to get my shoulders lined up correctly here at the top and get the C lined up as it should under the collar portion and then I'll make sure that I have my center line of my shirt lined up with the center line of the hoop master station. So sometimes I kind of roll my shirt up at the bottom just so that I have room down there to maneuver around. Then I'll pull my shirt up to line up with the C. I have grabbed another shirt in order to show you how I actually hooped the shirt because I lost that footage for this actual shirt. Anyway, one other thing I wanted to show you was here's the 15 circle. Remember my shirt was going to be um, hooped at C15. So I'll grab the, these are, this is the five by five mighty hoop. And I will take off the top piece. The magnets are very strong and you can easily get your fingers caught in there. So you have to be very careful. So I'm just going to lay this first piece down like that. And what I would have, of course, is I would have a sheet of um, stabilizer and I, I drop it in like that. But this is just a demonstration on what I missed showing you yesterday. So I'm just grabbing another shirt. I would lay it down like that. I would make sure that the shirt is lined up there with the C across the collar. And then I would grab the top piece where after I made sure that it was lined up in the center as far as the line is concerned on the hoop master system and then I would grab the top piece with the arms of my five by five hoop system and I would lay it right across there like that and <laughs> it already hoops that's how quick it hoops so it already grabbed you really would put it down like that and it hoop but it, it hoops just that quick because those magnets are very strong and so the shirt is already hooped and you can see it, it, if I had um stabilizer in there, it'd be nice and taut and, and ready to be stitched. But that's how quick you to my machine. This support bar came with my machine. However, the Mighty Hoop people sell the same type of support bar. And it's great while using Mighty Hoops and fast frames, things like that. Sliding the Mighty Hoops into the arms of your machine is not difficult at all. It's just a little harder with one hand. But um, you want to make sure that they're slid under the little slot and into the two notches on each side of the machine. And I make sure it's locked in. Then I try to always remember as much as possible to 
take my hand and run it under the free arm system there to make sure my shirt or whatever the item is has clearance. So my logo is already on the USB and it's plugged into my actual machine. I am going to locate it here and I hit the USB button and then I can see the logo. Then I can hit set button and I'm going to hit the trace button so that I can trace around the mighty hoop. Um, the hoop that's actually on my machine. That's the trace button there. Because I want to see if I have enough space where the needle will not hit the outside of the Mighty Hoop. Because the machine doesn't recognize the Mighty Hoop. This sheet is great to tell you what the actual sewing field space you have for the Mighty Hoops. I am actually known to trace two, three, and four times around my Mighty Hoops just to make sure that my needle has enough clearance where it will not hit outside of the actual sewing field. I'm trying to get really close here to give you a close up of how the cross hairs will show where the needle is going to punch when it begins sewing. I'm ready to hit the embroidery button to get started. And I changed the colors and set them up um, for white and pink and now I'm just going to go through the stitch out and it is, hmm, look at all the stitches. It's going to be about 25 minutes to stitch out is what it's telling me. It shows me the stitch count and all of that. So I'll go ahead and let this process run through. Sometimes I speed through the process and then I get a message saying, why didn't you let me watch the stitch out? So I'll let you watch the stitch out. I'll be back. At this point, I'm going to speed up the recording, but at least you'll still be able to check out the stitch out. I'll be back.
The stitch out is now complete. You'll see on the screen it was actually 22 minutes instead of 25. That's great. It came out very nice. I like how it's stitched, it stitched well. I decided that um, I'm also going to make a headband. You'll see the stretch material that, uh, some stretch fabric that I have. Here it is hanging on the shirt. I have a piece of stretch fabric that I removed the circle from the logo using the Brilliance platform. And I'm going to use my serger to make that headband. Thank you so very much for watching my video. I hope that you will take a moment to like and subscribe. Stay safe.